anybody who says otherwise about this story are liars. Mm -hmm. It's that simple because they weren't there. Hey guys, in today's video, this is a small segment from an interview I did with stuntman extraordinary Stephen Lambert. I'm going to post a full interview later. I'll be posting other clips and snippets throughout the week. But all this information, you've got to get this book. Stephen Lambert from the streets of Brooklyn to the halls of Hollywood, highly recommended. It will literally take you over a month to read, but the amount of content in there, just with Canon Films and the Ninja Craze in the 80s, Stephen Seagal stories, including this one in this video, Van Damme stories, Arnold Sloan, and so much more. Got to get the book. I'm going to link it in the description below. Amazing book, amazing read, highly entertaining. It's as if you're sitting with him in a bar and he's your friend and he's talking to you and telling you these stories or the way he describes it as if you're in his head. But you got to get this book. You can't. It's a page turner. You can't put it down. So anyway, on to the real story on Steven Seagal and Jean LaBelle from one of few men who were actually there to bear witness to it. So get the book because yeah, they got to read the book. There, there's definitely a lot. There's so much in the book in general. So much stuff, uh, good stuff on the Titanic, on Indiana Jones and the Last Crusade. Just yeah. you know, stuff on Sloan, Schwarzenegger. I do want to talk about Steven Seagal though. You are one of the four actual eyewitnesses to this whole Gene LaBelle Steven Seagal story, correct? Well, I think there's more than four, but yes, I am. I had a friend of mine, speaking of Steven Seagal and, and Jean LaBelle, a friend of mine uh, called me and informed me that uh, you did a podcast already on this. And uh, I listened to it. And you, there, was a, there was a few mistakes there. You had mentioned that uh, you had read the story. And when you told the story, it wasn't quite right. Oh, but we would definitely want to get the real story from the actual witness. So when I read the book, it from seems man, like... Hmm? From a man who is equal to my great friend and a wonderful talent, Conrad Parmesano, because there was conversation in there that I felt like, uh, uh, like, like uh, the audience was having trouble believing my story. That was completely true. So yeah, there was, there was two bodyguards, which was Steven Seagal's. There was Steven Seagal. There was Jean LaBelle. There was uh, Lincoln Simon who was stunt guy, uh, who was with me in my honey wagon and myself. So there was six, guys, six people there. Okay. Conrad, nobody else. There was no Conrad Palmazano, nobody else. You see, when you're working on a show, the honey wagons, the trailers are situated in a configuration, kind of like a, a, a wagon train would do when the Indians are coming after them, they circle it. So nobody on the outside can come in or see what's going on in the inside. So that was the circumstance. That's why there was only a six there, mm -hmm. which is two bodyguards, LaBelle, Seagal, Lincoln Simon and I, nobody else was there. Nobody else experienced it, nobody else saw. You know, the, uh, the people who, have conversations with it on video and on uh, in magazines. I say shame on them because they weren't there. And so they have no business, like God bless her, Rhonda Rousey, mm. you know. I discuss her with a few other people in the book, you know. It's kind of shameful how she speaks about the situation because she wasn't there. And she says things that, that kind of make me scratch my head and should make others scratch their head. Uh, you know, she brings up the style of keto and says a keto isn't a very good style, which every martial artist should take offense to. Even she should take offense to because what she does has in keto in it, you know? And what she says about the situation and what went on, she wasn't there as some others said too. And you shouldn't have an idea of what went on when you weren't there. So, uh, you know, it's a very disappointing being that she's a black belt and she's over 21 and she should have a little bit more maturity to figure out, you know, you don't put down a person 
or you don't say things that simply aren't true. I mean, exactly. my God, Gal didn't piss in his pants. He didn't go into convulsions, but there was a confrontation. It was a diff physical confrontation, but it, it didn't have anything to do with pissing in his pants and or going into convulsions. What happened was, yeah, you know, perspective uh, honey wagons, trailers, Lincoln Simon and I were in our own. We were sharing one, um, uh, playing parts on the show, playing ourselves. And we were in our trailer getting dressed uh, with the wardrobe they wanted us to wear. We came out, we got dressed, we came out. I came out first and I happened to open the door and I saw um, Seagal and LaBelle and uh, the two bodyguards um, talking in front of uh, uh, the honey wagon, LaBelle's honey wagon, his trailer uh, that he put wardrobe on. So, uh, and, and we were probably a good 30, 35 feet away. And I looked uh, in back in, in the, in the trailer and I said, hey, Lincoln, LaBelle's talking to Seagal. Let's go see if, uh, you know, we can join in, you know, just innocently. So uh, I jump down and I start walking over and Lincoln's about 10 feet back of me, jumps down and we start walking over and we get there and uh, they're just having a simple conversation in front of each other. And, you know, it's it's Seagal and, you know, the, the two body cards are on each side of them, you know, like the Adantis, you know, King and, uh, and uh, LaBelle, and they're talking about moves and introducing themselves, uh, being casual and uh, entertaining and, and everything's light. And, uh, and uh, they start talking to, about different techniques and uh, they're, they're talking about a chokehold. And uh, Seagal starts the conversation and he goes, I, I, I see the way you do your chokeholds. And uh, he was disagreeing. Uh, on um, the way that LaBelle would do it. And LaBelle said, well, let me explain to you how I do it. Let me show you. Now, as you being a black belt, a martial artist, when you work with somebody, a master, a black belt, uh, you know, even somebody uh, that is a white belt, um, when you're working with somebody, when you're showing somebody, it's an automatic known fact rule that you go slow. You're having a conversation, you're teaching, yeah. you're showing, you're expressing your movement. And that's just what LaBelle was doing. In slow motion, he walks around, uh, Seagal, you know, and uh, he's in back of him, uh, facing his back and LaBelle, and uh, Seagal's kind of looking, overlooking. We see the, the two bodyguards looking and, and uh, uh, Lincoln and I are kind of we're in back of um, one side and back of uh, LaBelle watching, you know, very innocent, you know, and, and LaBelle starts to put his hands around him and very slow, just as I'm moving, right? And the minute his hands go around Seagal's neck, before he even touched him, you know, grazed him, Seagal just sidesteps, full blast and forearms, you know, Bang, forearms. See what I'm doing? Yeah. But down, right in his crotch. That's crazy. Full blast. I mean, like, if I told you, if I spread my legs and I said, hit me in the crotch with your forearm as hard as you can. And that's what that's what Seagal did. And LaBelle jumped up like three feet in the air. And I see LaBelle's face. And and it's literally three feet in the air. And the moment his toes touched the ground, he just sidestepped and spun his hand around the front of uh, Seagal's neck and took his leg and put it in back of uh, Seagal's feet and just threw his arm back and threw his leg forward, LaBelle that is. Yeah. And Seagal went flying up. See the way my arms are? About four feet high and landed right on his butt and back. Hard. Ouch. And the bodyguards looked at Seagal. And I looked at Seagal. And I looked at Lincoln. And everything, this is in slow motion. 
and Lincoln's mouth was open and my mouth was open. I was shocked because that was full blast. Everything was full blast sure. until then. And the bodyguards looked after he looked, they looked at uh, Seagal, they looked at LaBelle and I'm watching this. And this happened a matter of a split second. And I'm thinking, oh my God, here comes a huge fight. Because I'm thinking the bodyguards are looking at LaBelle. And the bodyguards look back at Seagal. And I look back at Seagal and Seagal shakes his head like a no. Hmm. And the minute Seagal did that with his head, the bodyguards stood down because they were like almost in reaction mode, confrontation reaction mode. And like I said, this happened in a matter of moments. And the minute LaBelle felt like, you know, everything was easing up, he stuck out his hand and said, but if I did that, let me show you what you could do and help them up. And I was scared that something else was gonna go on. So I ran to get the stunt coordinator, Conrad Palazzano, and he was busy with, with a, a, a camera, setting camera. So I'm in back of him and he had producers, directors, the DP, everybody listening to him. So I'm in back and I'm waiting for the right moment, you know, because you can't just barge in. You don't want people to know. You don't want to make a big thing out of this, right? So I go in back of him, wait for the right moment. And I kind of lean to his ear and I said, Conrad, I said, uh, there's a confrontation with Seagal and LaBelle at base camp, you know, you better get over here and break it up. Well, he didn't understand what I was saying, so he ignored me. And I'm just looking, and he's continuing with his camera work. So I walk away, kind of hesitant, five, 10 feet away, and all of a sudden he pops up and he realizes what's going on. And he runs over there, and he yells to LaBelle before he even gets over there. You know, he's like 40 feet away, and LaBelle, get back to your trailer. And LaBelle looks at him and goes to his trailer, right? Back to his trailer. And that was the end of that. And that's what happened. Now, who told, who got it out, who spread it out? I know I didn't. I know Lincoln did it. At least I believe Lincoln. I don't know if the bodyguards did it. I don't know if Seagal did it, leaked it out. I don't know if Gene LaBelle leaked it out. Gene LaBelle, I love him. You see how close Gene LaBelle are and I are in the, in the movie, but Gene LaBelle is a showman, right? Um, I don't think he would tell a lie. I think that lie, that rumor, that part of it, pissing in his pants and going to convulsions, I think it was spread by somebody else, somebody who was writing the story, you know? It went yeah. from somebody to somebody to somebody, but I believe LaBelle would never say what was said to the magazines and all that. If I had to I, guess. I, and I um, also, let me say, I, I feel horrible for Steven Seagal. He deserved it, what he got, because mm -hmm. he started it, but the after occurrence, all these years later, is brutal. Yeah, because he's still getting crap about it. And I just wanted to, you know, give the audience full context. So you just want the truth out there, obviously. If anything, you and Gene LaBelle are good buds. And if if you were going to be biased, you would just go with Gene LaBelle because he's your buddy. But obviously, the truth matters more to you. Oh, exactly what I told you just now. Exactly what I have in the book is I've seen Gene LaBelle many times. He's read my story. You know, he says that's exactly what happened, right? If you put Gene and Bell and I together on an interview and I look at him and I say for you, and as I say, didn't what I wrote in the book, Gene, isn't that exactly what happened? He'll tell you that's exactly what happened. Right? Yeah, I, 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 mean, I don't doubt that at all. Um, I think it's interesting. I think close. And we've discussed this already. I've teased him, you know. <laughs> He tells me that he didn't say that. Somebody else said that. He can't figure out. But 
He'll play with you. If you interview him, yeah. he'll play with you because Gene is a showman. You know? I think he likes the idea that the story is out there because I've seen him in other interviews where he won't like necessarily confirm or deny it. I think because he got whacked in the balls, essentially, he just likes that Seagull, like this story is out there almost like it's deserving of that happening to Seagull because, you know, of the incident that happened. So I, I kind of feel like maybe one of the bodyguards told the real story and the guy who heard the story probably added something and then told someone else and they added something. And then it's, it, it's become into this essentially. That's usually the way it starts. Yeah. Now, like I said, you know, Seagal's fault. It's his fault. I also said, I feel bad for him. It's brutal because it's carried on this long, but if he would have admitted it in a playful way with respect, at the beginning or in the middle, or even now, it would go away. A couple of people have called me, you know, and said, and said, what, what do you think would happen if we got them together? And I said, well, I'm sure Gene would come, you know, Seagal's got to get off his high horse. And the trick is, is to make it funny. Yeah. Make it funny when they meet. Make it fun because I'm sure LaBelle would make it funny. You know, come here, Steven. You know, <laughs> yeah, you know, your ball shot really, you know, yeah, made me fly in the sky. You know, <laughs> how'd you like me falling out? You know, putting you on your back. You know, well, LaBelle, you're one of the few that has ever been put on my back. You know, I congratulate you for that. You know, for whatever, you know, it, 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 it could be humorous. And it would all go away. Yeah, that'd be and great I've if that played out. I've suggested that to a few interviewers that's called me up privately, you know, and uh, Seagal refuses to do that. So I think our interview is basically the only one with one of the witnesses, you, um, that's going to be out there because you did two interviews with Pomisano and Balicki and Seagal where you were telling the story, but it sounded like they wanted to like badmouth Gene LaBelle and kind of turn it into that. Well, that's a whole nother story. That's a, it's connected. Yeah. It's connected. I tell there's three or four stories. there connected. You're talking about, there was one at the Beverly Hills hotel and there was one um, at uh, uh, a uh, circus guy's house. Uh, the circus guy's house was the first interview that didn't come out for some reason. So we did one um, um, at another place um, at the Beverly Hills Hotel. Um, so there's three or four connections meeting with that. Yeah, so basically the audience has to buy this book to get all the details. But, um... but the, one in the, the one in the Beverly Hills Hotel was a mind blower. And, and you know, read that part in detail because it was scary. And I can't tell you what went on entirely, even in the book, there's one part of it that I talk about that you have to fantasize. But Seagal has that video, what really went on. And he threatens every now and then to put out that video. They try to trick me into bad mouth and Van Damme, I mean Van Damme. Yeah, LaBelle. Yeah. LaBelle. Uh, they tried to trick me into bad mouth and LaBelle. Um, but I was smart enough. I have Brooklyn street sense. There you go. Smart enough not to get it. And in the book, uh, you know, I explained that I stopped the interview, you know, once or twice and got really pissed off. Mm. And what occurred in there was a mind blower. And like I said, there's a certain part of it where I kind of, I, I go away from what was said and yeah, you have to think about it. And what the hell could possibly have gone on then? Seagal has the whole video. And like I said, he threatens every now and then to show the video, claiming that, that, that he has film of me. And I, you know, saying something about Gene LaBelle. And I go, show it. Because you tried. And I said, cut. And I told you, I don't like it. I told you, Seagal. I don't like that 
you are trying to get me to badmouth and blame it on Jean LaBelle. Sure. And they had to cut the film twice. And I said, I made an agreement on this meeting, this interview at the Beverly Hills Hotel, that the only thing I will say on this video that Seagal did not pee in his pants and he did not go into convulsions. That's all I'm here to say <laughs> because Conrad Palmisano asked me, a friend of mine, mm -hmm. you know, and that's all I'm gonna say, five seconds. My name is Steve Lambert, I'm here to say the Seagal LaBelle confrontation, Seagal did not piss in his pants, nor go into convulsions. End of story. I was there and I explained just that. Yeah, well, I'm, I'm glad I could post it on this channel because, you know, it's perfect for my audience to get the truth. And it's kind of great to have you uh, basically tell the story. And let me say again, because, you know, I can't reiterate this more, right? Anybody who says otherwise about this story are liars. Mm -hmm. It's that simple because they weren't there. The producers, the directors, whoever, only the six were there. Nobody else saw. Now, sticking with Seagull, he seems to have a bad reputation with hurting stuntmen. Is that true? Does he actually go harder than he should like punching them or doing other techniques that he should lighten up on <laughs> this video is to be continued i'll be releasing different sections throughout the week make sure to subscribe to the channel like the video and buy stephen lambert's book it's an amazing read linked in the description below and i'll see you guys next time